Yesterday, we revealed some of the plans to keep the food industry and supermarkets functioning all today. We have from one of the supermarkets themselves. Are the government's plans making a difference? Manvin Rana has been to a branch of Iceland to find out. Thank you. Have a nice day. Welcome to our Harborn store. Very nice it is too. Yeah. Should we do a little walk around yes, and show me yeah. one of the highlights? Well, this store had a refit about two years ago. Richard Walker is the managing director of Iceland. We're famous for frozen, so we have all of our frozen range. Uh, we have luxury seafood range. Although Iceland has become known for its frozen foods, it sells a lot of fresh produce too. A third of our sales come from chilled, uh, a third from grocery and, and only a third from frozen. So that's one of the things that we're hearing the most around the idea of a no-deal Brexit, that it would be very damaging for fresh food supply lines. Will you be affected by that? Yeah, I think we will be. Undoubtedly, the, the big question is how. And I, you know, being, being honest, I have absolutely no idea. I don't think anyone does, uh, least of all the government, because I think there's a distinct lack of clarity and guidance from them. Have you had any guidance recently in the last couple of weeks, given that it all looks like it's getting quite close? What, what are they saying? I do feel that the industry is playing blind and what we need is a thorough plan from government. I love a bacon sandwich in the morning, uh, as do many of our customers. Almost the entirety of the UK's domestic bacon comes from Denmark. I don't know whether there's going to be friction at the border, there will be tariffs on on the bacon. I'm just not quite sure in the short term how that will play out. Are you stockpiling to prepare for what might happen if there's a new deal? With regards to stockpiling, it's a, it's a bit of a misdirection. Companies can't really stockpile for more than a, a week or two. They just don't have the room on the balance sheet or indeed in warehouses. And the retail industry has been pointing out that a Halloween Brexit is the worst of all possible timings because the warehouses are full anyway. And we're pretty much at maximum capacity in the run up to Christmas as retailers start to stock build for our, our peak trading time. Are you expecting gaps on the shelves here? No doubt in the short term there will be a bit of turbulence and and there are certain products like bacon where we are overly reliant as a nation on European sourcing. There will be tariffs on on bacon and of course the big unknown element is uh, short term fluctuations in the pound. Do you think your customers understand that the price of goods like that will probably be hiked up? If there are large shocks in currency and tariffs, then the whole market is going to have to look at some of the prices on food. Richard Walker says it's Iceland's five million customers that he worries about if food prices are suddenly increased. One of the issues, I suppose, with a no-deal scenario, there will be turbulence, and that turbulence will hit the most vulnerable communities the worst. What do you want to see happen? Personally, uh, you know, I've, I've argued for clarity and for a way out of this which would uh, be via a a second referendum and I say that as someone who voted to leave. I think with three years on we've all learnt so much more and we are paralysed. My fear of course is that we're sleepwalking over a a, a no-deal cliff edge. DEFRA, the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, told us they're working closely with the food industry to support preparations ahead of Brexit. But is the government doing enough? to support supermarkets. I do now detect a sense of fatalism that is coming into the market. There was a lot of goodwill in March. A lot of retailers prepared quite thoroughly for a no-deal scenario through stockpiling and also hedging currency movements. And they got financially burnt by it. So I think the kind of financial will from the retail industry to thoroughly prepare this time, that goodwill is, is gone. And, you know, there is a sense of fatalism now whereby you know, I don't, I don't see why we should take the financial burden for other people's political games. Manveen Rana reporting there.